Hello everyone, today we are talking about LCX, my favorite crypto exchange token on the market. And in terms of regulations relating to Liechtenstein, EU and the US in regards to the SEC. A lot of info in today's video. Why I choose to invest in LCX over CRO, over BNB. Not to say that these cryptocurrencies are bad, but just a total addressable market. When you think about tokenization in terms of LCX and just in terms of market cap, when you compare BNB to LCX, I'm a long term investor. I'm in here for the long haul. I have my main five, the sort of mid to higher range sort of cap cryptos. I'm trying to expand my portfolio and snipe these lower caps that are going to be more aggressive on returns that I'm not too exposed to. But LCX, I gain more and more confidence every time I make a video. And my portfolio of LCX expands time and time again. I want to go over what makes it different to me from my perspective in terms of key points. Satisfying strict institutional investor requirements and a new standard when it comes to crypto exchanges. Lot of value in today's video. Stay around to the end. Without further ado, here we go. Okay, so LCX tick the boxes when it comes to requirements for institutional investors like stability, like custody, compliance, transparency audibility, creating these key elements, these key points, for example, compliance with the regulatory and tech requirements for to enable security token offerings on their platform. That's huge in itself. When it comes to tokenization, like we talked about in that video, and um, you know, digital representatives of these financial instruments on the blockchain, we're talking about on chain uh, asset management, we're talking about on chain identity with real time Cap table. What really seals the deal for me in terms of LCX is approaching a new standard when it comes to security tokens and issuing private securities. The irony of it is the SEC deemed LCX a security for other reasons, but I trust the Liechtenstein blockchain laws more and I trust the European MICA regulatory framework a lot more than the SEC. Because in terms of the XRP uh, Ripple videos, you know the actual motives behind the SEC. It's all smoke and mirrors, right? In terms of not just issuing these private securities, but how they are traded and transferred in a compliant manner. When it comes to these other, you know, European uh, countries, you know, going forward, I can't think of any like Liechtenstein in such a compliant and regulatory manner. They've been named the Silicon Valley of the digital year, the second digital year of the digital age. With regulation in mind being the whole theme of today's video, let's go into some tweets and some articles solidifying LCX's place in the scheme of things. So, first tweet is by myself. David Hepburn underscore link is down below to my Twitter. There are now nine. There's not eight. There's nine. The other one is, the new one is, physical validator. LCX are the first physical validator in Liechtenstein and globally, the whole world. That is literally insane because of many reasons. But LCX is responsible. So I'm going to be here for maintaining the integrity and security of the tokenized assets on the blockchain. This involves verifying the authenticity of underlying assets and the physical safekeeping of the real world assets. What real, real, real world assets are we talking about here? Well, in terms of LCX, we're talking about Timons. Timons is a platform for tokenizing diamonds, allowing investors to purchase and trade diamond assets using blockchain technology. And with the regulatory approval of the physical validator, LCX is well positioned to expand the Timons platform in 2023. Monty, the CEO and founder of LCX, commented down below referring to Liechtenstein as the only country worldwide with a holistic blockchain law for all aspects of the crypto industry. LCX is global from day one, serving clients from more than 100 countries. That is huge, right? Because these laws, these um, licenses, sorry, are applicable elsewhere. Countries in the European economic area, Liechtenstein is a part of that. So MICA is permitted in Liechtenstein. And here we can see at the bottom of the article, out of the 26 countries, Liechtenstein is listed right there, part of the EEA. Also, we can see European G20 leaders call for urgent regulation. We all see MICA pushing for regulation or moving in force early 2023. But even though these things are being pushed forward, it takes a while to finalize. Everyone is calling for 2023, for example, with the electronic trade documents bill in terms of global trade finance when it comes to XDC. It went to Parliament around October, November sort of time. It won't be finalized or in effect until mid-2023. These things take time. Also, in regards to the SEC versus LCX, let's hear Monty's side. So the SEC filed a lawsuit against an ex-Coinbase employee and the two other named individuals in relation to insider trading. The person was in charge of listings and shared confidential information with the other two individuals who then did trade, uh, trades and bought these tokens. And these are the crypto tokens 
listed or labeled securities. Now try and get this by me, right? A Coinbase employee insider trading on LCX somehow then makes LCX a security. Zero, zero cents. I really do not understand this, right? And also we can see um, on the litigation complaint with LCX has continued to take steps that underscore the profit potential of LCX for investors, particularly in trading on secondary markets. Now we see a lot of bullet points here, mainly taking tweets from LCX himself. There's a really funny one here. So you can see right at the bottom. So the LCX website has a photo of its CEO pointing to an advertisement for LCX.com and LCX tokens that state in part, goodbye Goldman. Is it by chance that Gary Genzer from the SEC worked at Goldman Sachs. I will leave Monty's full response down below for you guys to check out because I hear this time and time again every time I mention LCX and TikTok, all I hear is security, security. The SEC are on the wrong side of history here. They're on the wrong side and the US is essentially falling behind in terms of regulatory clarity when it comes to these crypto assets. Just look at the Ripple versus the SEC. Also, another reason why you might think is irrelevant comes to the quality of partnerships like Quant Network, like Constellation Network, like Hedera Hashgraph, the research that I've done, the people involved in these projects when it comes to the CEOs like um, Lehman Bear from Hedera Hashgraph, like Gilbert Verdian from Quant Network, like Ben Jorgensen from Constellation Network. These people I hold in high esteem, I do not think they would partner with a scam. These partnerships are enabling right now and going forward when it comes to Quant, uh, DLT and through the Overledger and being a gateway operator when it comes to instant transactions with the HTTP, with Constellation Network and consensus uh, with HTS when it comes to Hedera Hashgraph. So much value for these partnerships. Lastly, a clip of Lehman Baird with Monty on the importance of regulation and compliance, the whole theme of this video. That is pretty much it for today's video. Just realize the whole message of this video that the Cowboy Gravy Train Exchange is coming to an end. Words by Gilbert Verney himself, uh, partner of LCX. When it comes to, you know, this back in 2020, he foretold this uh, with FTX and there's more and more exchanges going to fall. We just don't know which ones. More lower tier grimy exchanges going forward. Micah, 2023, these licenses being passportable and permissible in the EU. Very advantageous for LCX. If you enjoyed today's video in terms of regulation compliance of LCX, maybe go into something a little bit more in depth, a little bit more technical in terms of tokenization, tokenizing the world. Huge market, just like interoperability of quant, going beyond cryptocurrency. But that's pretty much it for today's video. It's far. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. What's the importance of regulation and compliance at the moment for you? I love what you are saying. So Hedera doesn't do anything. It's just plumbing. Just like the internet doesn't do anything. It's just plumbing. If there's no apps on top of the internet, who cares mm. if we have routers that can send bits back and forth across the planet? And if you don't yeah. build anything on Hedera, who cares that it's 10,000 transactions a second? What's a transaction? It doesn't do anything. And so the only way that Hedera is useful is when you build things on top of it. Hedera is just right. a foundation. People love to move into a house, but you won't move into a house if there's nothing there but a concrete slab with plumbing and electricity. You have to have a house on top of your foundation. And mm. so what does that mean? It means we support tokens in ways that will let you do whatever you want, but you need to do something with it, right? We're just enabling whatever you want. And when you do the whatever you want, you have to worry about regulations and you have to worry about markets and you have to worry about um, getting people to understand it and to use it. And you have to worry about the user's interfaces for what you're doing. All those things are the house on top of the foundation. Uh, you might have to worry about identity, and people are building identity on top of us too. Whole layers of identity things, which becomes very important. All of these things are built on top of the foundation. A foundation doesn't do anything by itself, and Hedera mm -hmm. is just trying to provide a, a trust layer.